I have an interesting new stove to share with you. This was sent to me by P.S. Cook. It's a folding stainless steel wood stove and I know it looks a lot like a barbecue. Actually it's very effective as a barbecue but today I want to see how it will do for boiling water. If you're interested keep watching. Okay, so I thought I'd do things just a little bit differently today. I'm going to get right down to the assembly of the stove. And as I'm assembling the stove, I'll show you some of its features and some of the options for its use. And we'll talk a little bit about its statistics. So when the stove arrives, this is what it looks like. It comes in this nice little nylon bag. Not super high quality, but plenty good for keeping the stove all in one place. Zippers across the top and inside is the stove assembly itself and it comes kind of in two pieces and this grill on top I now understand is called a pot stand and I'll share with you the reason why I say that in a minute but here is the stove all stainless steel fairly heavy gauge not as heavy as some but heavy enough and that's all you really want because already this is coming in at a pound and a half and I'll give you all the measurements and the weights and everything in the show notes below but just roughly what we have right now is we have a little over six inches in and width right now a little bit over eight inches in this diameter here and we're looking at just three quarters almost an inch thickness that's in its collapsed state plus of course the grill that goes on top now what's cool about this stove is that it opens up like a book so it's basically a three-sided item and you can set it up there's two ways you can use this you can use it like this or turn it completely upside down. Now what's the difference? The difference is where these two grooves are on either side. So they are a little bit closer to the bottom here than they are at the top. So this gives you really four height adjustments and I'll show you what I mean by that. The distance from here to the top is greater than the distance from here to the top. So if you want to bring your flames up close to your cooking surface then then you would have it set up so that the grill is sitting up like this. I like I'm going to have mine set down low so that's the, the way I'm going to set it up. Now here is the fire pan and the fire pan is just a simple piece of stainless steel with a little it's almost like a, a cookie tray griddle to hold off of the base. Um, I've had about a dozen fires in this stove. I am getting a little bit of warping in the pan itself. That's the only thing that's warping, but it hasn't affected its use at all. So in the setup, and I'm doing this backwards so you can see how to set it up. On the end of the pan are two bent over hooks. Choose where you want those to set on one side, fold it over, fold it in, slide them in, and we're done. That's it. That's the whole stove set up, minus the grill on top. And there are grooves that hold that in place as well. So very interesting design. And as I mentioned, I can raise or lower the fire pan itself, depending on where I want to use or which of those uh, holes I want to use to set it in. So I have it set pretty much at the lowest that it is designed for. This will give me the, you know, the highest amount of fuel, the most fuel I can put in this. This wide open design right here is different than any other wood stove that I know of. Uh, when I looked at this, I thought of it as a small barbecue. And as you'll see in a minute, I have used this as a barbecue with charcoal. And I'll sub that in in a few minutes time. So you can see me roasting up some sausages with it. But it, uh, it certainly works that way. It does also produce a lot of heat coming out this way. Now, I suppose what is going to be good about this large open design is I can put long sticks in here that, and feed the fire, kind of like firebox style, but longer sticks crisscross them at any, any uh, height I want. The benefit of that, of course, is less, food, less wood processing. So what I'm going to do at this point is get this set up. There's a fire pit here. I'm using that as much of just a containment area and kind of prevent the wind from affecting the fire too much. I'll reposition the camera. We'll get a fire started and we'll get my lunch on. Let's get a little bit of fine spruce branches. A little larger pieces of wood here. So just broken branches picked up. I've got a little bit of splits of maple here. I'll put a few of them on, but I'll, I've got a lot more I'm going to put on as it gets going. No birch bark today. I'm going to use something different. Today, I'm going to use my Uberlieben Tinderwick. Product I've been testing. To do a review on pretty soon. 
trick to use in these is to get them well flapped up. It's a paraffin wax infused jute twine that extends out from a piece of tubing. Get my ferro rod out. So I'll twist it around my microphone cord, of course. Okay, I've got a good surface there now. And strike. My tinder wick is lit, and like a good match, good storm match with extended burn time, I'll just hold it in under. my tinder inside of the stove until it gets going. Alright, I see some flames coming up through. Should be enough. Withdraw the tinder wick. Just put away, ready for use another time. And of course my fire is going to be a little smoky until the wood gets caught on. So while the wood is catching, I'll prepare my lunch. I suppose I better get that grill on route before I can't do it. There. As soon as I see some of that wood caught, I will get my pot on and we'll get my lunch going. Okay, we've got a bit of a fire going. You can see how big the open firebox is. I'm using sticks 9, almost 10 inches in length. They don't stay in really well unless you get them in there full length, but if I just wanted to lay longer sticks in like that and then keep feeding them in, I could. Everything I have right now is all cut down a little shorter. And I could feed it through and through the top, I guess. Which is what I'm doing with these ones. I've got some bigger pieces as well. All right. Well, the fire is now caught on enough. Lunch today is going to be one of these seeds of change. This is baked beans in a package. And I'm going to do it right in my zebra pot, right over the fire like that. Except I need to make sure the handle stays up. My little homemade clip. There, now, put that on. Okay, while this is heating and I continue to feed wood in here to get my lunch hot, I will splice in the clips I have right now using this with charcoal like a barbecue and then we'll come back when my, I've had my lunch. So as part of my testing of this uh, folding wood stove from P.S. Cook, I wanted to try charcoal, lump charcoal, to see if it, how it would work as a mini barbecue because when you look at it, that's, that's the first thought I had is it looks more like a little barbecue than it does a wood stove. So I lit up a little bit of wood charcoal that's uh, uh, pretty much ready now for grilling and to supper tonight we're having one of our Happy Yak meals, a uh, mushroom and rice or cheese and mushroom risotto. So on the side I'm going to have a couple of sausages, hot Italian sausages made locally here. So, uh, you know, this, this is quite a handy little stove to be able to do this with. I'm, I don't think this is going to work well with wood pellets. I can't quite see how it would set it for wood pellets unless I put a screen in it. But, uh, you know, so far for wood, the testing I've been doing with wood and now with the charcoal, it seems to work very well. What I like about it is there is a lot of heat coming out of the side. You can see it just kind of pushes the heat out. I don't know if a mini reflector oven uh, I don't think a full-size reflector oven, but maybe one of the little uh, homemade reflector ovens I have. You know, that's a lot of heat. Uh, with wood, more than the charcoal, I should have enough heat to use that as, uh, you know, with a, with the reflector oven to do some cooking, a little baking with it as well. So I can see that the sausages are starting to sizzle already. I wasn't quite sure where to put it height-wise. Uh, right now it's probably at the lowest position that you can set it on of the, uh, the adjustments there. But, uh, you know, I could have brought it up a little higher, but I will tell you, there is a <laughs> there's plenty of heat for grilling right now. So that's what we'll do, is I will spend a few minutes grilling these sausages up. I'll show you what they look like, 
and we'll get back to the rest of the video. Okay, that didn't take long. These things are, are grilled, pretty much grilled up just nicely. Uh, I did I failed to pack any barbecue sauce on it, so they're without the barbecue sauce, uh, but I don't think that'll bother them in the least. I did pierce them to release a little bit of the fat. They are taking some nice grilling marks on them, as you can see. One thing I noticed, uh, do be careful with this grate. You can see the way it's designed. There's a rather large hole in the middle here and then on either end. It looks like it's done for aesthetic reasons, not necessarily for any structural rigidity, but what it does is if, you, if I turn these at an angle, and I'm, what I couldn't notice before is the stove has got a slight cant in this direction, ever so slight, but the sausage just wanted to roll. I almost lost twice. I almost lost the sausage down into the charcoal. Not that it would have ruined it, but it's just a nuisance to have to fish it out of the charcoal again down in there. The other thing I could have done to make it a little easier for myself, the way the welds are for the grill, if I had turned it over, there would have been a little bit of an edge that might have helped to prevent those things from rolling off. So I'll, I'll make sure to do that in the future as well. Otherwise, these are pretty much per perfect. And uh, now it's time for Gina and I to have some supper. And we'll get back to the rest of the review on the folding wood stove from P.S. Cook. So just a few observations as this, as my lunch heats up here. It's just about ready. Uh, there's a wide opening there, so you can get a lot of wood in there. If you cut the wood properly, you don't have to have it extending out past the window. Uh, that can be both a good thing and a bad thing, I guess, the size of that opening. Longer sticks, I could have just fed them in and had them continue to feed in, like you might a firebox stove, and you can get quite a, quite a few of them in that way and it would have worked out well. Uh, using it this way, as you can see, is generating a lot of heat. There is a good amount of surface area here. This is my 12 centimeter zebra, so you can see I could probably get yet another pot on right beside it. Uh, I don't know about a small fry pan, but certainly either two small pots or one larger pot even yet, because there's lots of surface area. So one of the things I think you'll notice from the clip I just showed you about barbecuing is this does not make a good grill for barbecuing on because of the large holes. Well, I noticed now when I checked out just before coming out to make this video that uh, P.S. Cook is including two things with their stoves that didn't come with my version. One is an actual grill that you can lay on top in place of what they're now calling this the pot stand and grill directly over your coals. They're also including nice telescopic bellows for helping with your fire. I haven't had any uh, issues with the fire here. Of course, I'm yeah, I'm losing. Well, I can see moisture coming out of some of that wood, but uh, you know it's burning well. The only thing I can see about the size of this opening that uh, may be a negative is one: you are losing a lot of heat. Like that, that's that's hard to hold my hand there. I may at some point try seeing if I can do a little reflector oven cooking with this. I think that would be a, a cool additional feature to it. But outside of that, there's a lot of heat being lost there. The other thing is, is you do have to keep a close eye on it for sticks falling out. So I've had a few small ones fall out, nothing huge, but I am, use, I am in a fire pit here that I know is safe to use so I don't have to worry about uh, coals hitting the ground. Even so, it just bear in mind that you do have to keep your eye on this. Uh, all right, I think my lunch is hot. It's been boiling here, bubbling for a few minutes. That's probably hot enough to eat. What I'll do is, after I eat my lunch and the fire has gone out, I'll close this video up. So the folding wood stove from P.S. Cook. Well, I don't think it's a competitor for the firebox stove. I don't think that's the way to look at this. Look at this as something completely different. It may weigh in the range of the firebox stove. It may be about the size of the firebox stove, but the design is so significantly different, they're, they're not even a similar stove in a lot of ways. So as I mentioned in the beginning, I will give you all the specifications, the weight and everything in the show notes below. I'll also include links to where you can purchase this on Amazon. Uh, you know, I like it. My primary thought is that I think it's best suited for me anyway as a charcoal barbecue. It works really well. I wish I had received mine with the grill on top rather than what they're now calling the pot stand. But that's okay. I've got other grills that I can put with this. It, uh, it works well with charcoal, as you saw in the video. It works well with wood. You can feed long pieces of wood in this, so you don't have to do a lot of processing. That's really actually kind of nice. I'm going to try some baking with it at some time. I'm going to use one of my little homemade reflector ovens to see if there's enough heat radiating out through that large hole to bake with while I'm boiling something or frying something on top of it. Long-term durability, 
I can't tell you. I can tell you that the stainless steel, the three folding sides are perfectly aligned. There's absolutely no warping there. There is some warping in the fire pan. It's nothing that's going to affect the performance of the stove. It's just aesthetics, that, that's all. I see a tiny, tiny bit of warp in the pot stand. Nothing significant, not considering how much heat I was putting out through this. As I say, I've had about eight, maybe 10 fires altogether now, I guess, with this. And uh, it's standing up well. Will it stand up all through the years like a firebox stove? I don't know. But at the cost of this, it's, it's worth an looking at if as an alternative to a firebox stove, or as I said, as a barbecue. I think that's probably one of the better ways to look at this. Okay, I think that's enough on this stove for today. I don't know if there's any stoves I can compare this with in tests, but I'll look through my collection. And if there's something that's worth comparing it with, that's what we'll do for one of my backyard tests. But until that happens, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.